to discuss the rise of right-wing extremism. We're joined by Peter Simi in Irvine, California. He is the director of the Earl Babby Research Center, and he has studied extremist groups and violence for the past 20 years. Um, Peter, what is your take on this case in New Zealand and the profile of the suspect in this case? I think one of the most important things to recognize about this uh, massacre in, in New Zealand is that it's part of a larger historical and organizational uh, culture and strategy that's been promoted for um, decades, if not more, among white supremacists. They, they use this term lone wolf terrorism that's become popularized and, and used in the media as well. Uh, to describe uh, the idea of a single individual or a small, a small group of individuals going out and committing these kinds of acts of violence in the name of the larger cause of white supremacy. And so based on the manifesto, uh, based on some of the associations of this individual, some of the uh, social media uh, uh, activity uh, of this individual, it's pretty clear that this fits into this larger pattern of, of white supremacist violence that unfortunately we're, we're seeing uh, too, too much of uh, just in recent years. Now I did see that according to the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism. Major U.S. cities have seen hate crimes increase in the past five years. It's certainly been uh, publicized. We're hearing about it a lot more. But what would you say is behind uh, this rise uh, around the world? What has been the big motivation to act out globally? Well, in one word, fear. Um, white supremacist uh, groups, uh, the movements across the globe, um, they, they may have differences among some you know, issues. They may have differences organizationally. Uh, in some cases, individuals may not belong to a specific organization or just part of a larger movement. Uh, but one of the things that uh, cuts across and that provides a glue of sorts is a fear about demographic change. And so it's a scapegoating, it's a uh, pointing towards uh, immigration, what they call non-white immigration. It's a type of xenophobia, it's an anti-Muslim uh, uh, sentiment that's uh, very prominent among these groups. Uh, and you see this as a rallying cry, as a way to try and unite uh, both groups and disparate individuals around this notion that whites are being replaced. So the, the name of the manifesto uh, uh, coming after uh, the uh, book that uh, was published um, uh, called The Great Replacement. Uh, this is a notion of essentially white genocide, that whites are on the verge of extinction and are being replaced by so-called non-whites. Uh, you heard this in the rallying cry in Charlottesville, Virginia, among uh, folks there that were uh, congregating to this the whole notion of Jews will not replace us, we will not be replaced. So this is a mantra that's very central uh, within their worldview that cuts across the globe, uh, whether we're talking about here in uh, North America or the United or in Europe um, or in Australia and New Zealand, uh, th these are very similar views about this notion of, of whites being on the verge of extinction. And you mentioned fear, but how much of what we're seeing is spurred on or related to uh, politics, politicians, or even social media? Yeah, well, both play a huge role. Uh, social media, absolutely. Uh, these groups have been you know, using social media uh, since the earliest days of the internet. Uh, they've been congregating online as a way to associate and affiliate with others of like mind, as a way to distribute their propaganda and get the message out to a wider audience. Uh, and then, um, you know, in terms of elected officials, uh, politicians, you know, we, we've seen, again, globally, across the globe, um, leaders use fear as a way to scapegoat, as a way to point the finger at outsiders who are somehow contaminating society. And of course, here in the United States, we're seeing our, our own very own president uh, use the issue of immigration as a way to, uh, you know, that he's using this as a, a, a this issue, uh, describing it in terms of an invasion referring to immigrants as an infestation, uh, a classic uh, term of dehumanization. So uh, yes, we, we see elected officials play, and, and, and the manifesto even refers to President Trump in part as a, um, as a force in terms of uh, opening up this dialogue about white identity in a way that had been more difficult uh, in years past. All right, Peter Simi uh, in California, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.